Hello there, and welcome to Legacy of Love and Laughter. Today's video, we are smoking. <laughs> kind of excited about that. That's right. The date today is April 29th. Gotta no, it's remember. April 30th. Oh, it's the third. That's right. It's the 30th. It's the you got to remember tomorrow, make a May basket. Which is a reminder that we started this just a little over a, a year, year ago, ago now. Because yep. I think the May basket was one of the first ones we did. Yep. I think you're right. So that's pretty exciting. And, uh, but today we're smoking. We want to talk a little bit about back in the day and smoking and did we smoke? I am Alicia and I'm Valerie. And we are making these videos for our family primarily, for our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and anyone who comes after them, and for our growing number of of viewers, yeah. which is very exciting. We it's never, amazing is what it is. Yeah. We never thought anybody would be interested. And, and, and just in case it's any of the young people, smoking then wasn't like smoking now. So, yeah, a lot of things. We're doing tobacco smoking is what we're talking about. Oh, absolutely. We already, we already talked about that other smoking one day. Yes, we did talk about it. You'll have to go back and watch <laughs> them. Speaking of which, if you like what you see today, you want to see more, you can click like, which is important, but also we're going to be posting it on YouTube so you can subscribe to Legacy of Love and Laughter to this video playlist and uh, see all the videos when we put them up. That's pretty Some exciting. of them are very entertaining. They are. We tend to, one wouldn't think that at 78 almost. And 80. It'd be so entertaining. I swear, we're not the, we're not the cookie baking grandmas, you know, we're still working. Oh, right. Well, I wanted to begin today with a little memory from 1962. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 60 years ago, there was a comedian. Yeah, I got wow. Woo. You got married in 61, didn't you? That's like I said. It's been a year, 62. over a year since we got married in 61. Yeah. Right. Okay. So anyway. There was a comedian, there still is, he's still around, I believe, Bob Newhart. And he did a piece about Sir Francis Drake reporting to the court of Queen Elizabeth I on his trade mission to the British colonies of America. Um, he's playing the part of the Duke of Earl. Oh, that's another whole story. Duke, 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 Duke of, of Earl. Earl, 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 Earl. <laughs> <laughs> or some such limey poobah listening into the phone while Sir Frank the Flake is trying to impress upon him the immense potential profit of his marvelous agricultural discovery the ingenious people have put him on to. So, Bob Newhart always talked on the phone. Did you know he was fighting a stutter as well as our president? No, I had no he idea. He did. He did, and the phone... Uh, Stick was to pop, give yeah. him the time to think and everything. So, so uh, okay. So he hear, aha, and what do you call this stuff? Tobacco? Tobacco. Oh, huh. So what do you do with it? I see. You dry it out and shred it into little bits. Okay. And, and then you roll it into a little paper cylinder. Okay. And then what? Frank. Frank, you got to be kidding me. You're going to have to speak louder. We got a bad connection. Okay. We got this paper cylinder full of dried weeds. And now what? You, you put it in your mouth. And, and then you do what? You set fire to this combustible mess in your mouth, but rather than spit it out and pee on it, you suck it right down until it almost blisters your lips and you inhale the smoke. <laughs> I always thought that was so funny because if you explain smoking to someone, it makes no sense. 
which is one of the reasons oh, we don't smoke. But we did. But we did. Things were very different back when we smoked. What were some of the things that were different? First of all, there was no pot. There was so no your choices were very limited. There actually was Mary Jane, which was pot, but nobody smoked it. Yeah, oh, I didn't only the that. kids on the wrong side of, of the, the track. <laughs> I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. No, but there's you had tobacco for pipe, you had tobacco in a cigar, and you had tobacco in those lovely little cigarettes that they put in pretty little packages, packages, just to get get your attention. You know, oh, smoke this one; it's prettier, and this one's got a and then that nice cowboy advertising it. Smoking became appealing because only the cool people did it. So, it, which means that if you wanted to have people think you were cool, you had to smoke. And so, so something to do with your hands, you know? So you weren't just sitting there going, <laughs> you had to have something where you could light it and roll it and put it in your mouth. And, oh, that um, was the whole thing. We'll talk about that later, the whole rolling the you thing. You believe it. You do you have one of those machines? No, I never rolled it. Do you remember the name of the company that rolled them? We'll talk about that in a minute. I have no idea. Try to remind me because I think I'll forget. Okay. So when we first started, the first time I started, I was walking down the street with some girlfriends. I was about 13 or 14 years old. Just a and child. Uh, we were just kind of sort of trying to see what this stuff was like. We were walking past Danny Bradnini's house. I had such a crush on him. He looked like a, a, an Italian god. He was amazing. <laughs> And so we figured if we walked by his house and we were smoking, that he would be impressed, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, <laughs> and that was, that was the end of that. It was so cool. It was just so it cool. It was so cool. <laughs> As I choking up that liver. Um, yeah, that, so that was my very first, but I didn't smoke again until I was dating uh, my husband. Well, what as much you? as you don't believe it, I started, started smoking after my second child was born. Because I had a husband who smoked, and I thought, well, if you can't fight it by saying smoke's getting in the curtains, smoke's getting in the blankets, the smoke is all over the place, and the dirty ashtrays and everything, I decided, well, the heck with this. I want to smoke, and then it won't bother me so much. That That's not true. So if somebody tells you that, it's it's not true. So I decided to, to try it, and he smoked Lucky Strikes. That's a tough cigarette let me tell you no filter that's no right nothing. we did not have filters when we oh, started so when smoking. you get in there boy you got to get only the best so you had to take it and tap it down to get, yeah. so that what they were already rolled we didn't roll our own so you rolled it up and you, you you took it out of the thing and you had to tap it so everything would go down and then you could light the paper end of it and have at it yeah that was gross uh we we actually by the time i started smoking we had um we had filtered cigarettes because I started smoking, smoking, not that first try walking past Danny Brad and his house. Um, I tried uh, I, Newports. I worked for a lady. I was babysitting for her and her husband, and they smoked Newports or Bel Air. Bel Air. They smoked they had, Bel Air. They had when I started smoking, too, but, but my husband smoked non-filtered cigarettes, so they were free for me. I could... Or one of his, you know, to smoke it. It's true. I just stole them from my <laughs> from my boss. And then, of course, when I, you know, dated Steve, I, I wanted to be cooler and smoke more, which is really stupid. Because starting smoking is not easy. No. It's not easy no. getting that crap down in your lungs, you know. And uh, there were, so I want to talk then back about the the brands because you had a Lucky Strike. Dad smoked Lucky Strikes back in the day until they came out with that. Yeah, he smoked them. And Probably do you remember, uh, well, that's after filters came out and everything. Do you remember um, <laughs> what you would do if you, if you were walking down the street and there was a, a, a package, a wrapper from, and wrapper, they didn't have boxes in those days. There was a wrapper from Lucky Strike on the ground, what you would do? Oh, you had to snack it or step, yeah, step stamp on it, on it and go, strike me lucky. That's what it was. <laughs> Lucky cigarettes, not saying you're only lucky if you don't. They don't make you the lucky. Strike people were lucky. <laughs> they were lucky. I think Dad smoked Kent for a long time, and Territons. My mother-in-law smoked uh, Cool. 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 Cigarettes. Yeah, and, those, and the menthol ones are the worst. They're easier to get down, but they're worse for you because of the menthol. But um, I started with the Bel Air that I took from my thing, from my employer, and. Uh, 
then I smoked, I think, whatever Steve smoked. But as time went on, uh, one of the cigarettes that was very popular for women was Virginia Slims. Were those the black ones? No, those were Lark. Oh, I smoked yeah. both of those. I kind of like the Lark. I don't know why I like the Lark, but because I like the Lark. Because it was long and skinny and black. Well, so were Virginia Slims. <laughs> no, no, I got on my Newport kick, and that's all I had. What? That's that, that's censored. Uh, I think I did no, it. no, 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 I did it. I was my own naughty mind. Um, so anyway, so anyway, you were talking about the brand you smoked and everything. I smoked Newports because they were cool. They showed them on TV, you know, and it was always it was a very girl cigarette, pretty blue box. So what you do after you get that pretty blue box and everything, you just so you can be confident enough to light light it, find the end of it and light it when you got it in your mouth. It was like now you had to have a presentation. So in order to present yourself as a good smoker, you had to have Classy. something to carry your cigarettes in. So I bought myself a beautiful gold alligator print cigarette case that clicked open. You put your cigarettes inside. And it had a little chain that was attached to a little lighter. So you had to take your cigarette out of the case, tap it down. Once you got it tapped down, you make sure you get a hold of your lighter. You very delicately put this thing in your mouth and you click, click with the lighter. And you light your cigarette, take a nice short, <laughs> short inhale. And not, don't get a lot in there because it hurts like hell. <laughs> and then you just blow as much, slowly as you can. You blow it out so it looks like you have a lot, a lot of it going in your lungs. <laughs> It was pathetic. Lighters were a big deal. But I, but I loved having it. I yeah. had my little gold pack and my little gold lighter. And it's it's like losing your wallet if you misplace it. Makes you want to smoke again, doesn't it? it? Absolutely. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but we also, they had they had smokers furniture. They had uh, <clears throat> ashtrays on stands. Yeah. And uh, they also had little, they were like a, like a humidor for c cigars, only it was... Uh, cigarettes, and uh, they play music and stuff like that. They were very, very fancy schmancy. And Firestone, and this was because our grandfather worked for Firestone, made a tire with a glass uh, ashtray inserted into it. And uh, so everybody had those. And, and then what was the one you were talking about yesterday? I don't know. The baby thing. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody smokes, so my mom never did. Never. She, I don't think she ever even tried it. But what what Dad did was he took my baby shoe when I was my first pair of baby shoes, and they bronzed them, and they put them on a bronze stand with felt underneath and everything, and you had a little glass ashtray that was right next to that little baby shoe. What a lucky thing to do. <laughs> and that little oh. baby was getting your secondhand Second smoke. Yeah, I know. Isn't that, isn't that interesting how we all think? And of course, smoking did give us a good reason to um, uh, to buy gifts. So we always knew what we were going to buy the smokers. They got a carton of cigarettes and and a lighter, maybe an ashtray. So with right. all the all the I mean, accessories, it, 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 they went up to more fancier lighters. I mean, like then Vic, you could buy them in any pharmacy. You could buy them anywhere. You know, you had six or eight of them all over all over the place. Right, right. But the best thing to do was to have them in your little case with your little. I don't chain. think I had a little case at any oh, time. I, I never had any class. But before we get off the brands, I did have. Um, uh, now this is before this is before pot was pot as pot is today. But they had the zigzag man, and that was for rolling cigarettes. <laughs> then later on in the time, he was rolling well, whatever he pot. had. <laughs> but Laredo came out with. You could roll your own cigarettes and save money. So you'd buy this can of tobacco, and uh, you would have this little machine, and you'd push your paper down in there. It slid underneath this little guard thing, and then you'd shove the tobacco in there, and you'd, and you'd come out with boop, boop, a little cigarette would pop out. Pathetic looking, but it worked. And it, yeah, and if you didn't pack it light enough, man, that thing went up like <laughs> tight enough. It was hard to carry them, too, because... There was, they didn't make a special box. They tended to be kind of narrower at the ends, and the tobacco would kind of filter out a little. It was really not a great. Yeah, it was. And I, I, I used it like, you know, four or five times maybe. But then I said, I'll go by and back, you know, get the uh, box. 
But the, the doctors at that time actually recommended smoking as a way to relax. Yeah. Take the tension off. You so know. you would be encouraged until the Surgeon General said, no, that's not the way You're it killing works. killing your children. Yeah. And I mean, Val and I were talking about the way we smoke. And um, how, how did you smoke? I mean, how often did you smoke? I know that <laughs> usual. The usual way. <laughs> <laughs> When you smoke, you smoke the minute the phone would ring, look around for the little gold case, you know, so you can sit down and you, when you have appropriate conversation, you're talking, you must have the same process. And you're on the phone. And coffee, cigarette and coffee. Yeah. Oh, no, because then you had to run to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, no, I had to have my cigarette. But I did time things by cigarettes. I had some long-winded friends, you know who you are, and um, I would just, I said, well, I'll talk for one... Excuse me. <laughs> oh, ooh, I'm getting fresh over there. She doesn't even have any wine in her. It's because I don't have a cigarette. <laughs> I would say, I will talk for one more cigarette. And you know you're in trouble when you start, you're having a conversation on the phone. It's not done yet. So what do you do? You start looking around in the ashtray to see if you got a little oh, bit no, left. No, no, no. And that's one of the most dangerous things is to relight a cigarette. And they always look, people go to put their cigarette out. They do this and they go, yeah, I, I can't stand that sound. Oh, it's awful. And but what's you know what's worse than that is that after people have been like drinking and oh, yeah. partying, and you get up the next morning to clean up the oh, mess, oh, man. and there would be cigarettes put out in leftovers, like a little mashed potato. You know, <laughs> that that was really really gross. Um, and you know what? We all so many of us smoke. We did not know the difference walking into a smoker's house. We it all smelled the same and I'm sure our houses did not smell good with smokers in them. So then we came out with the Surgeon General who told us you should not be smoking. And uh and it's amazing to me this day that so many people still smoke. But one of the names that cigarettes got, do you remember what it was? You're gonna have another Nail, nail in your coffin. Oh, another nail in your coffin, yeah. Yeah, cigarettes are called another nail in your coffin. So when you but, had but it. But before it was illegal, they used to advertise cigarettes on television. That's right. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, and alcohol. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. It was the Marlboro Man. Ah, the Marlboro was, Man. Woo. And he was so sexy. Yeah, and he smoked it real cool. And he'd be he'd be out there with the mountains and the trees. He did die young. And the fresh air. And he died young. And he died a terrible death from lung cancer. Yeah. And that was pretty doggone sad. And the people still smoke. We still smoke, yeah. But there's a lot of people today that don't smoke anymore. They vape. Oh, and yeah. vaping is, well, the, the thing I think that attracts people is it's got all the little, you know, you got to have your, your like gadgets. My little, gold, my little gold case with the cigarette lighter. Yeah. And it's a gimmick. With vaping, you create a huge amount of steam or smoke or whatever the hell that is you're blowing out of your mouth. Uh, and so people like this great voluminous stuff coming out. What they don't realize is a part of vaping, and if you're a vapor, look it up, uh, there's little shards of glass that wind up going into your lungs. So you want to think about that. And new you know, shops are going up every day. I know. Really I know. Understand. And. People, one of the cool things that I always wanted to do when I smoked, but I never could, was make smoke rings. Oh, no, those that's hard to do. My father-in-law could do it. It's in your throat. You do it in your throat. That's like the people that can whistle, he can you whistle know, with too. their hands. <laughs> Mimi can whistle without her hands. She makes the loudest dang whistle. It would just trill you right down to your bone marrow. So, uh, yeah, so now they're making... Uh, vaping and stuff like that and we are smarter now to know that uh, it's not a good idea and we do still have loved ones that smoke and you know we, we can't stop you it's a it, it, at this point it's well so smoking it's still a free country yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of other things is not but you can smoke that's true. That's and true. uh there were some good lawsuits out there do you remember what um the lucy show do you remember what brand they advertised on their show. Gosh, I don't think I do. 
Paul for Philip Morris. Philip Morris. See, all you do is get me started, and then I remember. <laughs> they had a, a little like a uh, bellboy. And I don't think they make those cigarettes at all. Philip either. Morris. I don't know because if you don't smoke, you don't know. Now I know there's a lot of the Indian spirit now and stuff like that. And uh, I one other little tidbit on smoking before we toddle off today. Tobacco was one of the few jobs younger people were allowed to do in oh, Connecticut. Okay. And you may not realize it, but Connecticut was famous for tobacco, for cigar wrappers. Yeah, the, the good, the fancy tobacco. It was yeah, called wrap, wrappers. shade-grown tobacco. So yeah, those of you from Connecticut, there's a little trivia for you for our state. Um, I think that's pretty much, oh, you know what, though, before we go, how and why and when did you stop? I stopped when cigarettes became 50 cents a pack. I thought that was the most outrageous thing. You got, how many cigarettes did you get in the yeah, pack? That's not right. Pack? I smoked when they went from 50 to 75. It was always 20 in a pack. 50 cents. When it got 50 cents, I said, no way in hell am I spending 50 cents. But she'd bum them from me. Well, of course. And that was my last cigarette. I didn't do that very often. <laughs> I must have been desperate that day. My last cigarette was the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, I know Mimi was very small because she was in the daycare at the Norwich 10 pin where we used to bowl on a league. And uh, I took out my cigarettes. I had one left. Bowling alley was a great place to smoke. Everybody smoked there. And I uh, w took out the, the cigarette and I was getting ready to light it. And she says to me, oh, can I bum one from you? And I said, sure. And she I didn't say it's my last one, but sure. No, I said, sure. And I gave it to her. And I went and bummed one from somebody else. <laughs> and that, but that I, was okay. She could do it. <laughs> that's because I love her so much. I would give her yeah. my last cigarette. I could kill her. Have one of these. It'll blow your brain. <laughs> oh, that's the file mail for your coffin. <laughs> this and, is how you do it. But the, <laughs> the hard part about smoking, uh, giving it up the day before Thanksgiving, is but back in those days, just about everybody smoked between courses. You know, you'd have a little, yeah. burn, a little cigarette. You couldn't even get your salad down before have a little bit more. And, and I remember that that Thanksgiving, uh, we were uh, we were we Auntie, it was Aunt Bertha's, and we were downstairs. They had a converted basement to a den. That's what everybody in Connecticut did. You know, you had a cellar, you turned it into a den. And uh, so we were down there. So not only that, there's no windows. <laughs> now we're all down there smoking away. Just walking and into a cloud. People like my mom sucking in. The That's right. Second but she never complained smoke. about it. Because yeah. everybody did it. It was just a common thing to do. Well, you know, I had a funny experience. So I quit smoking. I was, I was about 30 because I smit. I, I smit poking. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell if you won't. I quit smoking. Uh, one year and the following year, I quit eating meat. So that was, uh, I quit smoking. And then, um, somebody, uh, who shall remain nameless and is not present with us today, uh, did something really, really bad to me, really mean, uh, lied. And, uh, I got so mad. I started smoking again. Kill me first. Can you? I really, wait a minute. This person did something that ticked me off. So I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to do long time suicide. You know, that's, that's ridiculous. Right. Ridiculous. So I hope we did not offend our smoking friends and family. You know, it's your life. You do as you will. Some people smoke till they're 100 and keep on going. Right. Um, we chose to quit. That's what they always but, used to offer you your last meal and a cigarette right. before they. You know, that's right. So, well, anyway, forgive us if we offended you. We did want you to know that we did it, too. And uh, it was a part of a lot of people doing it. But I, I'm hoping that sooner or later people for their sake, for their children's sake, for the animals in the world. It's really not a good thing to do. Yeah. I'm sorry to the cigarette people, the cigarette companies. They can find another way to make money. There's got to be another way. Find a way to addict people to good exercise and healthy eating. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> really, smoothies and uh, vitamins. We're going to do our best to make more videos faster because it's been a long time, but we've been through a lot in the past uh, um, few weeks, as we said in our last video, and now the campground's open, so we're really busy. The campground being open is really, it just interrupts a lot. In, but in, I am determined. We're going to do it. We will see you soon.
Thanks for checking in on us. Take care. God bless. Bye.